everybody here. Uh, this is the last Sunday of Lent. Next week starts Holy Week, so we got Palm Sunday. If we have people interested in helping with the reading, you can be Pontius Pilate for next week. So I've got the script to see me afterwards. Um, lilies, we're going to be, uh, if you would like to contribute to a lily and in memory of somebody or whatever, just fill out the envelope and write that on there. Appreciate that. Now what's the next slide? Can you push the next slide now? God, we confess to you our faults and failings, 
Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause harm with your call to us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you with the Spirit's power. Amen. Amen. Kind of an epidemic out there, actually, 
of people being depressed. There are a couple women, they had lost their brother. That'd be sad, huh? And Jesus came and he brought them back to life. How about that? Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, something to see for sure. And these were two women that really cared about Jesus and then he, uh, he brought their brother back. So that was really a wonderful, instead of a nightmare, it was kind of a, a joyous. Maybe you've had good dreams. Have you had good dreams? Like, whoo that'd be really cool if that happened. You have good dreams too? Okay. Like what? Do you want to share them? I got super rich. You got super rich? <laughs> The ring come a true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, my line right. <laughs> and then you shared it with those in need. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> which by the way, we had a great day yesterday sharing from the pantry. So thanks, Carol, and all those who helped out. We had a, quite a group there. So anyway, let's pray that uh, God doesn't let us get depressed. You know, helps us get life back to ourselves, okay? Whenever we get down. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for being a part of our lives. And when we're down and we're just feeling like dry bones, really, sometimes in our lives, that you can bring us back and uh, give us that sense of worth for ourselves and the joy we have in living. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up.
Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yes. Yes. You this in order that you may be here. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning, more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, with the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall be in Israel for all their sins. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8. To set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's love. Law, indeed it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Word of God, Word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were there, who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to meet him. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man who kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Did I not? Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he had been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Grace and peace from God, our Creator, and Christ, our Redeemer. Well, we're talking about uh, conversations that uh, Jesus had with various people, and this kind of conversation I'd like to talk about just a little bit. Uh, I don't know who in this picture you would like to have a conversation with. You know, the sisters, Jesus, Lazarus. Sometimes people think, wouldn't it be nice to talk to Lazarus? It's interesting that John doesn't tell us a thing that Lazarus said when he came back to life. But there's people that have interest in that, like, what did you experience, Lazarus? Maybe have a little interview here of what it's like on the other side. Not that many people come back to this side. I don't know if you've read stories about Houdini, who uh, really had an interest in this. He was trying to contact his mother, went to various seances. A lot of the seances, he proved that they were just fake and uh, really didn't find any that were true. But he made a deal with his wife that after he died, he tried to get in contact with her and they had a little thing that they would say to each other that uh, only those two knew. So for 10 years, she tried to get in contact with him. He, he died um, uh, not from one of his uh, routines, actually, which was interesting, but he had one of the things that he did, and, and <laughs> I'm not doing this, okay? So, but he'd have somebody hold him, and then you could punch him in the stomach as hard as you wanted to, and it, it wouldn't hurt him. That was a big deal. Well, he had broke his ankle, I guess, or hurt it in some way, so he's sitting on a couch, and the guy, uh, is talking to him and pounds him while he's sitting on the couch. Well, something happened there. And then on with the show, in spite of it, he wasn't feeling well on the ankle and everything else, and uh, he collapses during the show and is not revived. So that's how he died, of all things. But like I say, his wife was trying to get a hold of him for those 10 years and get a response, and nothing ever happened. So finally, she just put out the light trying 
that any longer. There's part of us that wouldn't it be great to talk to somebody like Lazarus about what your experiences are. There's a person, uh, Keebler Ross, who uh, wrote various books about the stages you go through as you're dying. And, you know, in later years it's not exact stages and how that goes through. Even she found this in her own life and thinking about her own death, that those stages just aren't click, 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 click like that. Uh, but she helped them start the hospice program and that sort of thing and certainly gave insight to that. Well, why she was doing that, she was interviewing a lot of people, see, for, uh, for this process of how you grieve your own de death. And some people had come back to life. You know, they had gone through a procedure or something like that, and they were resuscitated like Lazarus, and then they'd tell their story. And it was interesting how the stories were similar and pretty amazing to her, actually, to find this out. And so she started a place in Escondido, of all places. How about that? Just down the road here, 40 acres there, and it was for people that were dying to help them go through the process. But it was also uh, a little tilt towards this, can we communicate with people that have already died? What is there there? And uh, she fell kind of under the spell of uh, a practitioner of the divine, what was it, Divine Church, Jay Brenner, I think was his name, but it was really kind of a sucker punch. He was <laughs> giving her information that wasn't correct, and so in the end, uh, he was exposed and uh, moved on. In her own life, as there's a nice documentary about the end of Keebler Ross's life, but how she came to understand her own death and, and that sort of thing. And pretty much gave up on trying to contact the dead. I throw that in there because John doesn't really get that interested in Lazarus. And as I was looking at this text, I was kind of surprised about it. Why don't you talk a little bit about him? And it was all about Mary and Martha. It's all on this side of reality. And I was talking to my sister the other day, and, uh, boy, it's moving along real good. Have any of you had an MRI? I believe my wife just had one. My sister had an MRI, so she didn't particularly enjoy it. Anybody enjoy your MRI? <laughs> they asked her what kind of music she'd like to have playing during the MRI. Well, she thought some Brahms piano concertos would be nice. <laughs> well, this machine, clunk, 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 you know, I mean, it's. Not like you're going to hear those materials all that well. Uh, and so she did not appreciate being in there. But as she was in there, she thought about my mom and the Nordic Viking that she was. She was from Norway. And she also thought of my dad and the little Bundy Island between Sweden and Germany and how those people survived so she could survive the MRI. And I bring that up because, you know, Trying to contact the dead, you're going to get a sucker punch if you try to do that, basically. But to lean into what you've kind of gathered from them or learned from them, the strength that they can give you in your life, that's a beautiful thing. And that is what I take from this moment here with Jesus and Lazarus. Not to interview Lazarus so much, but to see how these women. They leaned into Jesus and the faith that they had in him. And it's really amazing, actually, that when Martha comes out and Jesus says, I'm the resurrection and the life, she says, yes, you are. And here, he hadn't been there, you know, when she kind of needed him. I'm sure, you know, she's waiting for Jesus. Where are you? Here, my brother is, is now dead. In four days, he had been dead. She was worried that he smelled, you know, when he went to the tomb. They put all these spices on there, but it was just a cave, you know, that they put the body in. And yet she believes in Jesus and holds on to that. 
She received that from him. And from her, her brother, likely, too. Now, hopefully they had a wonderful, enjoyable life after that. One of the things that um, you can learn from the experience of losing someone, as those two sisters did, at least for a while, and Lazarus, I'm sure the lesson he learned, is, boy, you save her life when you have it. Don't you appreciate each day? That's a beautiful thing to take from funerals when I'm a part of those. Uh, Jesus says to the disciples, you know, we've got to, uh, well, first of all, Thomas was worried. He didn't want to go back. Once they learned that Lazarus is dead anyway, why go back? Because they're trying to stone us there. It's not really a very good idea. And what Jesus' response is that, hey, you have to, there's 12 hours in a day, and anyone who walks in the daylight, they won't stumble. So we have to be about the work of God while there is light. So in this moments that we've been given to participate in the work of God in the world, what a wonderful thing that is. We can be light in the world, just like Mary and Martha were. Like, remember the story of Mary and Martha? And, um, Martha's doing all the work in the kitchen, and Mary's sitting at the feet of Jesus, and Jesus tells her, hey, you know, she's doing a better thing, listening to me. Now, <laughs> for all the people that are conscientious and working in the kitchen, you kind of go, I hate that story, you know, because I'm doing all this work, and here you are. But part of the story is exactly what the lesson is from funerals and those kinds of things, is, hey, you have to appreciate the moments when you have them. Sometimes maybe dinner has to wait to take in and capture this moment. So a lesson that they had learned. And then uh, Mary, you know, pours the ointment on Jesus' feet. And the disciples say, hey, you know, you could have taken that money and used it for something else. And Jesus, you know, save the moment. You're not going to have me with you all the time. So just a, a word from us. And we, you didn't have to be a part of a funeral today to just leave this place and to savor the moments that we have in life. Next week, Holy Week, Jesus will wash the disciples' feet. He'll go to the Garden of Gethsemane and the disciples will fall asleep. They won't necessarily appreciate all the wonder of these moments. And so we go back to them ourselves so we can appreciate them. You know, one of the great things about my mom is before she died, we took her to a Larson family reunion up in South Dakota. She made that long trip and, you know, just the memory of that uh, as uh, we were thinking through things, what a special time that was. So savor the moments. I'm going to, uh, you know, I like to ski and I also like to golf, so um, I put the two together just to savor that moment. <laughs> Get a golf ball up a snowbank. But anyway, we travel this life, savor this life. And then appreciate the glory of the Lord around you. That is the amazing thing, again, about Mary and Martha. Here they lose their brother. All these people come out from Jerusalem. They're weeping with her. And yet they see the glory in Jesus and they appreciate him at that moment in spite of everything that's happened. And the reading from Ezekiel, what a dream, huh? Everybody thinks, oh, it's all gone. It's done with. We're finished, we're in Babylon, we're in exile, nothing positive can happen anymore. Well, God breathes into it. So appreciate the glory of God, God around you and uh, kind of notice it. It was kind of neat to Elaine uh, came in today and she said, isn't this wonderful to have the sun shining through the clouds finally? It was freezing cold, but it was still, <laughs> still wonderful to have that. Uh, Martha, oh man, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. She had that moment. But also, I know that even now, she says, God will give you whatever you ask. Boy, talk about faith in this woman. She's kind of lost her prayer, and yet she believes that God's hand is still in the world. What a beautiful uh, word of faith that is. Behind the clouds there's that sun and when it comes out appreciate it. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Will you be, do you believe this? And she says yes. How about that? The glory of the 
The Lord is around us. Be aware of that. And then the living with Jesus forever. We don't know what Lazarus experienced. Um, you know, we can know this though, that these women have faith. Christians throughout the centuries have faith. You and I have faith. And the entire universe is full of things that have lasted forever. And Jesus coming back for us. What a beautiful thing that would be. There's wonderful advances in science in our time. You know, people can live a little, a long time. And during that time, let's savor it. <coughs> let's realize the glory of God around us. And let us continue to have faith that Jesus' hand is with us. And as we walk this holy week next week, we're going to see that Jesus places all his trust in that faith. Resurrection, hope, it is in Christ our Lord. So in this holy week, let's savor the road, be aware of God's glory, and then rejoice in living with Christ forever. Let's pray for that. Lord, we thank you so much for being with us in this life. Help us to appreciate it. Help us to be thankful for those who have gone before us and to lean upon their strength and to use that to rejoice in the days ahead and to know your presence is with us. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand for the hymn. This is a hymn we sang at my mom's funeral and uh, I don't think it had to do with what I want to say today. That the difficulties exist around us but uh, love rules both heaven and earth. How can you
join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. It's Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all creation. You have breathed into us the breath of life. Enliven your church. Deepen our partnerships with our companion churches around the globe in Poland and the Middle East. And bless the work of missionaries who accompany them. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your spirit brings life to creation. Enliven the natural world and restore ecosystems in need of healing. Uplift prophetic voices that turn us to the needs of the soil beneath our feet and the air all around us. <coughs> Merciful God, this is in our prayer. You redeem the world and its peoples. Free us from systems of oppression. Unbind nations and societies from the sins of racism, sexism, and homophobia. Raise up leaders at all levels of government who work to promote the dignity of every human life. Merciful God, this is our prayer. You weep when we weep. Be present with those who grieve or who, tro who are troubled by illness, especially Tanya, Debbie, Josie, Jeannie, Eloise, Linda, Becky, Donna, Jessica, Kara, Gloria, Carolyn, Maria, Brendan, Rebecca, Lucas, and Brooke. You hear us when we call to you. Deliver us from the depths of our despair and free us from the worries that bind us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your spirit of life dwells in our assembly. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who lead us in hymns of praise and thanksgiving and in songs of lament and prayer. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are the resurrection and the life. Even though we die, we will live. With thanksgiving, we remember all your saints, including John Miller, who now lives in your eternal love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love, your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you.
And when he had given it to you, gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer these gifts, sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of ours, of your Son, the holy food and drink of a new, unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Holy Father, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. May be seated, invite you to receive communion coming down the center aisle, we turn down the side aisles. The lighter liquid is grape juice, and there is also gluten free in the middle of the
embodied God at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, the Holy Spirit of rebirth, bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. Amen.